It has been more than three months since the PC release of The Last of Us Part 1, and at launch the game suffers from numerous problems and technical issues. Nevertheless, Naughty Dog and Iron Galaxy have diligently worked on the game and released several patches and updates, and their efforts have resulted in significant improvements, particularly in terms of CPU performance, textures, and VRAM utilization. And these patches also introduced some new adjustable graphical settings and changed some presets performance. That's why I decided to revisit the game again and retest all graphical settings with the most recent patch at the time of this video, which is patch 1.1.0. So let's get going. But before we do, when I say mobile games, RPG is not typically the first thing that comes to mind, but with Raid Shadow Legends, the sponsor of this video, it's a whole different story. This is a visually stunning action-packed mobile RPG with super detailed and tactical battle system, featuring over 700 unique and powerful champions. From the fierce orcs to the sturdy dwarves and even the haunting undead, the game offers a diverse range of champions to choose from. And with endless customization, you can tweak your champion builds and embark on a journey to conquer 12 imposing dungeons, each with its own unique challenges and rewards. And if PvP combat is your calling, engage in thrilling battles in the newly added live arena, where you can test your skills with or against over 400 million players from more than 190 countries around the globe. And my favorite aspect about Create Shadow Legends is that it's completely free and playable on mobile. And with player on play, you can take your progress and keep playing on desktop. Additionally, the game features regular content updates, adding in new champions, Champions, modes and more. For instance, if you play Raid for 7 days between now and July 24th, you'll get free legendary champion, the mighty orc warlord Archak. So if you haven't started playing yet, use my link in the description below or scan my QR code to get insane bonuses. We're talking epic champion Chelia from the Sacred Order faction and other useful goodies such as energy refills, skill tomb and XP boosters. So don't miss out this opportunity, just hit my link in the description, download the game, and maybe I'll see you on the battlefield. And big thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Now let's kick off with image quality, which is one aspect that hasn't been improved at all. GAA still looks bad, especially when it comes to preserving fine details like here, or foliage and trees like here. The LSS also still suffers from visual artifacts when using the flashlight compared to FSR, and FSR still exhibits significant temporal instability and shimmering during motion. Unlike image quality, textures has been really improved, and now even medium textures look fine with decent VRAM usage, and it's all thanks to this new setting called Texture Streaming Rage, and this one controls the speed at which textures are loaded, and lowering it can significantly decrease VRAM usage, especially when using high or ultra textures. However, the windsaw can also cause occasional texture pop-in in some areas like here, but despite this drawback, it it remains a great option to play the game with higher quality textures, especially for GPUs with 8GB or lower. And when it comes to textures, my recommendation here for 8GB is to give environment and character textures the priority, and put them on higher ultra since these two have a bigger impact on the visuals. As for dynamic object textures, medium or high look fine enough, while visual effect textures are not that noticeable and should be kept on low, and by combining these options with normal texture streaming, you'll get great looking textures without encountering any VRAM usage issues. Now let's move on to geometry settings, starting with draw distance. Unlike the launch version, this setting now shows a small visual difference between low and ultra, and it has a negligible impact on performance even in a CPU limited scene like here so I recommend keeping this one at ultra. Next we have dynamic objects level of detail, and similar to draw distance, this one has negligible performance impact, so keep it at high or ultra. As for characters level of detail, there is a noticeable performance impact between the options, because going from low to medium and high can cost around 2%, and to ultra 5%, so here I recommend high. 
and the last setting in this section is environments level of detail and this one has a noticeable visual impact compared to the other LOD settings and performance wise going from low to medium costs 4% to high 5% and to ultra 10% so here I recommend high Moving on to texture settings, we have texture filtering, and here going from 1x to even 16x costs up to 2%, so keep this one at 16x. And the last setting here is texture sampling quality. This one can have noticeable visual impact, but fortunately performance wise, going from low to even ultra doesn't cost anything, so keep this one at ultra. Now let's move on to lighting settings, starting with ambient shadows quality. And here going from off to quarter costs 1%, to half 4% and to full resolution 5%. So since half and full don't add a lot visually, I recommend quarter resolution ambient shadows. Directional shadows is another visual aspect that still looks bad. For instance, here even with ultra, shadows from the sun exhibit noticeable pixelation with low quality filtering. And performance wise going from low to medium costs 2%, to high 5% and to ultra a whopping 14%. As for directional shadows distance, this one when CPU bound like here can have a significant performance impact because going from low to medium costs 8% and to high on ultra 13%. So here since directional shadows don't look great even with the highest options, I don't recommend investing a lot of performance on these two settings. A mix of medium or low directional shadows distance with high directional shadows resolution should suffice. Next we have image based lighting, unlike the launch version this setting no longer affect the appearance of bodies of water, but it still adds a lot to the game's visual presentation, and performance wise it costs around 3%, so here I recommend keeping this one on. Dynamic lights quality is a new setting that has been added with patch 1.1.0, and it only affects the quality and density of dynamic lights on some specific areas like here, and it has negligible impact on the performance, so here I recommend keeping this one at high. Spotlight shadow resolution is similar to the previous setting, as it also has negligible performance impact, so keep it at ultra. Next we have point light shadow resolution, and here going from low to even ultra costs around 2%. So keep this one at high or ultra. Bounce lighting can have a small visual impact, but it's still not worth the performance hit, because enabling this setting can cost up to 9%, so here I recommend keeping this one off. The next one is screen space shadows quality, and here going from off to high costs 1%, and to ultra 4%, so high is the best option here. Dynamic screen space shadows only affect some specific scenes like this one, and performance wise this setting has negligible impact, so keep it on. Contact shadow quality is another setting that has insignificant performance impact, so keep it at ultra. Screen space ambient occlusion or SCO is an important setting when it comes to the game's visuals, and performance wise enable an SCO costs around 2%, so keep it on. The noise quality has minor performance impact even when going from off to high, so keep it at high. And similar thing for screen space directional occlusion with 1% hit to performance and also screen space contracing, which doesn't cost anything, so I recommend keeping both on. Now let's move on to reflection settings, starting with screen space reflections, and here enabling SSR with all sliders at 100 costs around 2%. So keep screen space reflections on with all sliders set to their maximum value. Now one setting that has significantly changed compared to the launch version is real time reflections quality. Here in my previous optimization guide video there is a noticeable visual disparity between the options where low looks well low res and blurry compared to ultra. But now with the newest patch there is no difference in terms of visuals or performance between options from low 
about to Ultra. However, when it comes to mirrors reflections, which is another aspect that this teaching affects, there is a significant visual and performance difference, where going from off to low costs 4%, to medium 6%, to high 18%, and to Ultra a massive 36%. So here if you want to use real time reflections, I recommend low or medium. And the last setting in this section is real time clouds shadow reflections, and enabling this one doesn't cost anything, so keep it on. Moving on to shading quality, here we have two settings, first screen space subsurface scattering, and enabling this one costs a small 2%, so keep it on. And the second setting here is refraction quality, and this one has negligible performance impact when going from half resolution to multi layer, so here I recommend multi layer refraction. Let's move on to visual effects settings. First we have effects density and this is a new setting that has been introduced with patch 1.0.5 and it controls the density of some particles and effects like here with rain particles and how they interact with some surfaces. And performance wise going from very low to low, mid and high costs 7%. So here since this setting only appears on some specific areas and low looks and performs similar to high, I recommend low effects density. Next we have volumetric effects quality and this setting's performance can vary depending on the scene. For example here going from low to mid costs 2% to high and ultra 12% but here going from low to mid costs 12% to high 21% and to ultra 22% and this setting also affects the VRAM usage. So here I recommend low volumetric effects. Let's move on to the final section which is mist quality, starting with animation quality, and here even in a CPU limited scene I couldn't see any performance impact between low and high, so keep this one at high. Another new setting that has been introduced with patch 1.0.4 is ambient character density, which controls the density of NPCs and some specific areas like here, and performance wise going from very low to low costs 2%, to medium 3% and to high 5%. So here if you have a low end CPU, I recommend using very low or low to maintain consistent performance and crowded areas, otherwise if you have a capable CPU, use high. And the last setting is AI quality and this new setting has been added with the latest patch. And I covered it in my previous video where I found no performance or visual difference in many scenarios and encounters. However, if you experience performance or higher CPU usage during encounters, I recommend lowering this setting. Now based on everything we saw so far, these are my recommended settings. Let's now quickly compare optimized settings with ultra preset using the same textures quality options on both sides. Here by going from ultra preset to optimized settings, we can see on average around 52% boost to performance. So overall, The Last of Us Part 1 stands out as one of the few bad PC ports this year that has shown significant improvement through updates and patches. However, despite these efforts, certain issues persist. Image quality still looks bad regardless of the chosen option, and directional shadows continue to exhibit pixelation and low quality filtering even with the highest options, and in some areas the game is so heavy on the GPU, and I hope that Naughty Dog and Iron Galaxy prioritize further optimization of the GPU performance and improve image quality and future updates. And with that we arrive at the end, thank you so much for watching and for your time, if you enjoyed the video leave a like and if not leave a dislike, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for future videos and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.